Hello friends of the internet, my name is Austin Belzer and welcome to my video review of Not Okay, the Zoe Dutch um, starring film on Hulu and uh, distributed by Searchlight, I believe. Um, so let's get right into it. Last year, when it was announced that Not Okay was in the works by writer-director Quinn Shepard, I couldn't make heads or tails of the announcement. I'm not familiar with Zoe Dutch, Dylan O'Brien, or any of the stars in the film other than Karen Sony, primarily because of his acting in the Deadpool films. And more recently, Mia Isaac in the film, uh, that is fantastic uh, film, Don't Make Me Go, it's streaming on Prime Video right now, at least in the uh, United States, um, where she co-stars, Mia Isaac, uh, co-stars with John Cho and somehow becomes the best part of that film. So one could say my expectations were on ground level. It's an independent film debuting on a streaming service, most of which are probably forgotten within the first weekend of their debut. So imagine my surprise when Not Okay was great. Featuring Zoe Dutch as Danny Sanders, a photo editor working at a magazine called Depravity, make your jokes now, that has no friends or followers to speak of before deciding to fake a trip to Paris to chase Instagram clout. However, when a series of bombings strike Paris, Danny gets caught up in a lie that gets bigger with each passing day. After returning home, she's hailed as a hero, catching the attention of her crush Colin, played by Dylan O'Brien, and social justice advocate Rowan, played by Mia Isaac. Someone who has undergone the trauma Danny only claims to have experienced. In her new role as social media influencer and advocate, Danny has everything she wants. Well, until somebody finds out. Whether it's Dutch as the, as the wonderfully cringeworthy Danny Sanders, the heartbreak Isaac's character Rowan feels daily, Nadia Alexander's wonderfully catty character Harper, or O'Brien's unintentionally hilarious stoner character Colin, there are no bad performances here. They're all great. I, I tell no lies, as Abraham Lincoln once said. However, if I had to pick favorites, it's the actors we spend most time with. Dutch and Isaac. They are perfect foils for each other and feel like they've always been friends, creating this chemistry that is somewhat unspoken, but some always there. Speaking specifically about Zoe Dutch, I haven't seen her in anything, but I feel that this is a career best performance. She's pulling out all the stops here. But we're told early on that she's not a hero. I was never angry with Danny's choices. I understood why she made them because I've made similar mistakes. Likewise, I think the script by Quinn Shepard illustrates how impossible it is for her to make the right choice. That said, she's an objectively terrible person. That's how you use that word, by the way, Logan Paul. Speaking of Logan Paul, she is wholly disconnected from the meaning behind the words she uses that can hurt others' feelings and how she uses that and exploits a country that is in mourning. On the flip side of that coin, Mia Isaac, I, I really don't know how she does it. I watched Don't Make Me Go about two weeks ago and thought she had a bright future. This is only her second role, by the way. But I didn't realize she was in this movie until she appeared on screen. Now, that's not bad. I'm just saying that she somehow outdoes that heart-wrenching performance. But anyone who's watched that film knows what I'm talking about. And she takes the trauma... Um, and talks about it. And what, without giving up what that trauma is, um, I will say it is pertinent to Gen Z, and her performance is heart-wrenching to watch every moment she appears on screen. So bring your tissues. Someone I also want to give a special mention to is Dylan O'Brien's character, Colin. He is such a lovable asshole, slash douchebag, pardon my French, and I'm also thankful that the film lets him be this way. I feel like a lot of films would give him a lesson or something to make him redeemed in any way. But it, the film lets him be that way. And any scene he is in makes, is made a hundred times better because of how touch, out of touch he is and how little Colin understands why he's truly famous. One scene contains a discussion around a scorpion joint, and it uh, had me laughing my ass off. 
uh, with that, Quinn Shepard's writing and direction are out of this world. Not Okay is her second feature film after 2017's film, or film uh, Blame, and Not Okay could have easily been a hollow movie about social media is bad or terrible, and how we need to be careful of the attention that we receive and what we see on social media. However, Shepard adds a lot more layers and context to the story, making it feel like something anyone can relate to. Whether you've chased clout, whether you've gone through severe trauma, or have had a terrible boss. For that, Shepard, I think, deserves ma major attention and praise. It also doesn't hurt that Robert Baumgartner adds some cinematic flair to the film. Having worked on films like Argo, There Will Be Blood, and Blind Spotting, among many others, I'm sure, his style kept me utterly enthralled. For example, there's this one scene that's a montage of Danny taking photos for her fake trip to Paris. Um, and the montage takes you through these apps like Photoshop, Instagram filters. Um, it's just everything you'd need to create a, a image on social media. It, it, it's fascinating, it's thorough, and I wish we had more films with this type of style to them. That same style applies to Molly Goldstein, who edited the film. While the film is nearly two hours long, it, it never feels like it. The pacing feels just about right, and I get the feeling that Goldstein had a lot of ton, a ton of fun editing the film based on the overall energy of the film. I foresee everyone having a great time with the soundtrack. There's bands like Oh Child, Georgette, Ty Lowe, Anna Jean, Campfire, Who Killed Kenny, Junior, and others. And that means anyone, whether they have a uh, bubblegum pop taste, whether they have a classical taste, it's all here. They, uh, the soundtrack has absolutely a wide berth of songs to jam out to, um, no matter their tastes. However, given the plot, obviously, that there's a bit of a French twist to each song. Now, my only pain point when it comes to that is that the soundtrack released is missing a ton of songs. Now, I figure this is probably because they're licensed and likely shit will show up in a Searchlight um, Spotify playlist. In fact, I've seen Spotify playlists on, that contain some of the songs I'm talking about. Um, but still, I think for the people who are buying those soundtracks on places like iTunes or, um, oh, um, or maybe a CD, I don't know if it's on CD, but this is, I, I feel like they're getting, not getting their money's worth. Um, but that said, if you're up for a streaming movie, either today, this weekend, or in the future, this movie has, not okay, has a ton of heart, a modern message that makes sense, absolutely dazzling performances, will make you laugh at its jokes. So make sure to catch up with Not Okay. It's some of the, one of the best streaming movies I've seen since Passing, which came out on Netflix last year, and Coda on Apple TV Plus last year. So I give Not Okay a five out of five star. I know, it's gonna be controversial. And if you're wondering where you can stream this, you can watch it on Hulu, with a Hulu subscription in the United States, Disney Plus internationally, uh, and Star Plus in Latin America. Uh, if you want to listen to my commentary, I'll include a, a link in the description below, uh, as well as a link to my written review, um, as well as Patreon, all, all the fixings. Uh, if you like the video review, uh, um, I, I would very much li like it if you liked it, or if you didn't like it, thumbs down. Um, and. and if you have thoughts on the film, I'd love you to comment on this. Uh, and then if you want to see more of these video reviews, like uh, Vengeance, High School Musical, the Musical, the series, episode, season three, episode three, uh, stuff like that, uh, make sure to subscribe for more. But until next time, this is Austin Belzer signing off.